May I now invite the Honorable Attorney General of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka to address you. Mr. Palita Fernando, President's Council, Attorney General of Sri Lanka. Uh, Mr. Upul Jayasuriya, President of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka. Her Excellency Michelle Sison, Ambassador of the United States of America. Mrs. H. W. Jawadana, Mr. Prasanna Jawadana, Mr. Adit Patira, and Mr. Rajendra Pereira. When you come to any place where you are comfortable, they say that you are at home. But Mr. President, let me tell you, when I come to this place and when I attend meetings at the Bar Association, I feel I'm, that I'm at school. Starting from Mr. Prasanna Jayawadana, Mr. Upul Jayasuriya, Mr. Ajit Patirana, and all of them were products of the same great educational institution that produced Mr. H. W. Jayawadana. Of course, the solitary Tomian Mr. Rajinder Pereira stands alone. As far as Mrs. H. W. Jayawadana is concerned, she's also linked to Royal, Madam. I'm sure you're linked to Royal, and you are also a supporter of Royal College, so I consider you also to be a royalist. <laughs> I've been to this place on numerous occasions. I've had the opportunity of coming to this place and then attending meetings. And let me tell you, when I entered this auditorium today, I thought that it is an entirely different place, refurbished and turned into an auditorium fit for the Bar Association of Sri Lanka. Madam, I first, when I first saw Mr. H. W. J. Wardena as a young law student, my friends introduced him to me or showed him and told me that that was Mr. J. R. J. Wardena's brother. At that time, Mr. J. R. J. Wardena was not the, pre uh, the president. He was the leader of the opposition. And some others told me that that was Hiran's father. Mr. Hiran J. Wardena was a royalist, two years senior to us. He played rugger, so he was well known. So that is the way that he was introduced. My first meeting with Mr. H. W. Jayawardena was when I was the president of the Law Students Union. The Hector Jayawardena gold medal was donated by the three brothers, President J. R. Jayawardena, Mr. Corbett Jayawardena, and Mr. H. W. Jayawardena. Now we were finding it difficult to get this medal on a particular year because President, His Excellency, was out. Mr. Corbett Jayawardena also was not available. And I was told that now I have to meet Mr. H. W. Jayawardena and ask for the middle. I never knew Mr. Jayawardena. I was just a young law student who had nothing to do with Halstorf. So with a lot of trepidation and reluctance, I approached him. And I introduced myself and I said, sir, we have this difficulty. Would you mind helping us? He looked at me and said, right. What is your name? So I gave my name. He noted down the name and said, right, don't worry. That's all he said. Believe me, madam, when I came to the Sri Lanka Law College, the principal was looking for me everywhere. Then he told me that Mr. H. W. Jawadana has already arranged for the medal, and he mentioned the name of the person who's going to do the medal. He's the person who had done the medal. And within one and a half days, the medal was available. Now, that is my first dealing with Mr. H. W. Jawadana which I shall never forget. When, he came, when I came to Hulstow with a lawyer, young lawyer, I used to go and sit and watch Mr. H. W. Jayawardena argue his cases. Calm and collected. Not one harsh word. Whatever question that is posed, I quote, he answered with a lot of commitment, and I thought, someday I must be a lawyer like this. That is a dream that I can never realize. I have tried in vain to emulate him on his feet, but I've always failed. But he was one of the greatest lawyers that I've ever seen for the reason the manner in which he presented his cases is something that anyone would envy lawyers. Having said so about Mr. Jawadan, let me also tell you something about my good friend, Mr. Upul Jayasuriya, my classmate at Royal College. Mr. President, let me tell you, the day you step down, you will sit back and think about your achievements. 
And this achievement of yours is something that you can be proud of every day. This is something that will stand to tell you that you have done something and for which you will be remembered. <laughs> Madam, Rudyard Kipling is one of the poets whom I admire. He had said in one of his poems, if, if you can dream and not make your dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, then you are a man, my son. I think, Kupul, this is a relish dream that you have realized today. A dream that you have realized not only for the Bar Association, but for generations, and we shouldn't forget the United States of America and, Madam, the role that you have played in it and the unselfish generosity of the H.W. Jawadana family. As the Attorney General of the country, let me also tell you that we have a severe problem of resources. Recently, a delegation from Vietnam met me from the Attorney General's department, and I asked them, what is your population? They said, 90 million, and they asked me, what is your population? I said, 22 million. Then my next question was, how many officers do you have in the Attorney General's department? My answer, his, the answer was, close upon 7,000. Then I prayed and hoped that they will not ask me the next question, but they did ask me. The question was, what is the number in your department? I had to tell them, well, little more than 125. <laughs> so what I want to tell you is that we have resources. We do not have the resources. We have stretched to the maximum. But then I can tell you with a lot of pride that we also have been allocated a block of land in Hulstorf and a building planned has been now drawn up for an eight-story building. I may never see the color of it. I never will step into it. But then the day I relinquish duties, I also can be very happy that during my tenure of office, that the approval has been obtained for the building of a wonderful building, that is the Attorney General's Department new building. And I'm sure that we would be able to fill the vacancies. We have 125 vacancies already in the card, approved cadre but due to the problem of space, we have not been able to do it. So let's hope that we will be able to achieve it. So Mr. President, you have achieved something great. Members of the bar are happy about it. Let me assure you that the members of the unofficial bar are equally happy about it. We consider ourselves as one part, as two sections of one family, members of the official bar and unofficial bar. We are all single-minded in one quest. What we want is to see that the law enforcement is efficient. To that end, we are too happy that you have also got this wonderful building. Now, about the heights that you have reached and what you have achieved, let me tell you. I read recently a poem by Longfellow, written by my good friend, I don't call him a friend of mine, he's a senior of mine, my respected senior president's counsel, Mr. Jayanta Gunasekara, where he had said, the heights of great men, reached and kept, were not attained in sudden flight. They, while their companions slept, were toiling upwards in the night. Thank you very much.